Yes. Good taste. Welcome back, Island Hoppers. I don't know if that scorpion necessarily tasted good, but it was definitely something exotic and unique that Bangkok offers. So we're gonna go around the temples. We're gonna show you the floating market. We're gonna show you the train market. We're gonna show you around Khao San Road and many other places. So let's do it. And for those of you who've been tracking this journey for the last four months, you know that we've been to over 25 countries and we're flying in from India. And you can see here we are at BKK, which is also the other name for Bangkok or just the abbreviation for the airport. All right, so we're gonna get on one of the many tuk-tuks, but check out this ride right here. And showing off a tricked out tuk-tuk is definitely a thing out here in Bangkok. All right, so we're here at the train market. I guess the train comes at five o'clock. Yeah, so this train market is actually an hour south of Bangkok. So if you wanna come out here, plan accordingly, and there can be traffic at times. But like I said, 5 p.m., that's when the train comes. And it's really an interesting experience. And here it comes now. This is what it's like when they come steaming through. It usually knocks over a few vegetables and try to keep your feet off the tracks, but that should go without saying. And also while you're down here at the train market, you can also go to the floating market, which is nearby. So include that in the tour if you can. A little later on, we will show you that floating market, but now it's up to Bangkok. So we're gonna cruise up the Chao Phraya River here for 2,000 baht, two people, one hour. We're going to the Grand Temple on the river boat. Now this is the main river that goes through the heart of Bangkok. It's not the floating market, but they do have floating structures along the side that you will see. Well, we're gonna do a river cruise along the wild Bangkok River here. As well as temples, and you get a good view of the rest of Bangkok. The cool thing about being on a boat is it's definitely less traffic than being on the road. So sometimes taking a boat up the river can be faster than taking a car or a taxi or even a tuk-tuk. But to be honest, nothing really beats a motorbike. And just a couple facts about Bangkok. It has a population of 10 million people, but if you include the metro area, it's well over 14 million. Someone from Bangkok is called a Bangkokian. What an interesting word. It is the capital and largest city of Thailand, but the interesting thing is it wasn't always that way because Ayatuya Kingdom, formerly known as Siam, is what used to be the primary area. And most of you probably recognize the word Siam because of the Siamese cat. Yes, it comes from Thailand. All right, we're gonna feed some fish here. And as you can see, getting in and out of these long tail boats isn't always the easiest thing for a guy that's six foot two. But the good news is we're gonna head over to the temples now. Yeah, so the way it works is when you go into the Grand Palace here, you can't wear shorts, it's hot. So of course wearing shorts, but you can get these uh, elephant pants or something similar like this for 200 baht, which is around like five bucks. Okay, fine, I'll do it. I don't know how they look. What do you think? Is it me? You guys let me know in the comments. And I do still have those elephant pants. I just haven't worn them since I bought them. Uh, but hey, if I go into a temple that requires pants, now I have some elephant pants. Chang. And in case you're wondering, Chang actually means elephant in Thai. So when you see that beer, Chang beer, it's elephant beer. But as you can see, we are at the Grand Palace walking around. It really is a beautiful place to explore. But they do have rules about filming in the inside of the buildings here, so we were not able to film anything inside. You'll just have to come see it for yourself. 
And as per usual, we've actually hailed down a tuk-tuk driver, or he found us, and he's going to show us around. Heard he stopped a standing Buddha here. Okay, so here we are at the standing Buddha. We're going to go inside. It's 40 baht per person. Bangkok is the land of many temples, and in fact, Thailand is the land of many Buddhist temples, and they're all very unique all across the country. Some of them will really stand out as being picturesque. This one here was very unique and peaceful. I personally like to go to the temples and learn about different belief systems and just really become more worldly about my approach. We have a lotus flower and a candle. We're gonna go over to the Buddha and we're gonna light it. All right, we are at the Maha Nakhon Skywalk. This is actually the tallest sky observatory. It's sunset, so let's see what we can get up here. And tickets to the top of this building here, which is the tallest 360 degree observation deck in all of Bangkok, goes for about $22 per person. You can book online. Uh, some people say they've even gotten them for 200 baht, which is around five bucks if you can get that price i would definitely take advantage so check online for the prices before you go because having an e-ticket is much better than showing up there and waiting in line i would say the best time to show up is going to be around sunset but also keep in mind it's going to be the most crowded so if it's a blue sky kind of day maybe showing up in the afternoon might be better than showing up at sunset unless you absolutely need a sunset to get some pictures but you can see they do have the skywalk with the glass floor which is kind of crazy actually if you ask me i don't know you look down and you're kind of like vertigo vertigo but i don't know what about you guys would you be able to walk out onto that glass floor or would you get vertigo like i get by the way there are several areas to the top this is just the very top down below they also have an indoor area you can get drinks coffee go to the bathroom that's just a little bit below here about three floors down and as you can see, Bangkok is a massive metropolis and it's a really modern city blending in with some of the old structures. And some other things to put out there about Bangkok. Most people who come to Thailand say the first thing you do when you get to Bangkok is leave Bangkok. I would recommend 72 hours in Bangkok. I personally like to spend about a week there. I think it's got good food, good shopping, good vibes. I like to go to movies here, go to the malls, but it's not for everyone. But if affordable hotels, good food are your thing, definitely hang out in Bangkok. And after a nice night of taking in the skylights over around Bangkok at sunset, now we're gonna head and get some food because as you would imagine, we've worked up quite the appetite. And this is actually a look at the elevator ride down. But where we're going to eat is going to be on Sukhumvit Road. I was actually in the mood for some Korean food. And in case you don't know, Sukhumvit is actually one of the main drags right through the heart of Bangkok. It's not quite as ruckus as Khaosan Road, but we will be showing you how ruckus Sukhumvit can get when we head down to Soy Cowboy. But look how yummy this Korean barbecue is. Yum yum. <laughs> All right, so there's this big party place here called Soy Cowboy. Let's go check it out. Yeah. 
right guys, so we are on Kawasan Road now. We're gonna go explore right around here. And you can see right behind me, we got an interesting looking crocodile on the grill. So they say if you want to eat a scorpion here, it uh, it's like an aphrodisiac. Eat everything. Oh, it's good for your muscle. Yeah. Yes. Good taste. Okay. Yeah. Good taste. Yeah. Buy more. <laughs> okay. 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 So we were at Kalsan Road just before sunset, but you better believe at night this place gets poppin'. When you guys come down to Khao San Road, come see this guy, number one taxi driver, very cool guy. So along with all of these beautiful, colorful pagodas, you'll also find that golden sleeping lounging Buddha, which is really cool, it's huge. And I found it to be quite impressive artwork inside the actual uh, structure. Uh, lots of people here, but that's okay. Very colorful. I do recommend this place for sure. And if you were pinched for time and you had to pick between the Sleeping Buddha or the Grand Palace, I would say this, the Sleeping Buddha is probably better choice, better price. You don't have to worry about putting on pants here. So this is the one I would recommend over the Grand Palace. And seeing a large Sleeping Buddha, statue is actually pretty cool. And you can see the lounging Buddha here, very big Buddha, but also wait till you see his feet. Also, walking around the area outside is very Instagrammable for those of you who are looking to take pictures for your Instagram. You'll notice that not just the Sleeping Buddha is good for Instagram pictures, but also the outside of this place with the pagodas, very scenic. And in case you're wondering, a pagoda is one of those temple structures that you see that go up and usually very colorful with decoration. All right, we are now here at the Golden Temple. This is where the Golden Buddha is. Let's go take a look.
So the Golden Buddha here is actually the largest Golden Buddha in the world. The thing is, when you go in, no video, so we're just going to show you a couple still shots. All right, guys, now what we're going to do is show you around some of the malls. We're going to start out here at Icon Siam. So Icon Siam is really uh, a first floor street food, lots of street food. Except for instead of being on a street, you're inside an air-conditioned mall. You go up, second floor, you get a soup. And the main benefit of the street food environment that they have at Icon Siam is that you don't have to deal with the heat. For those of you who've been to Bangkok before, you know that in the heat of the afternoon, it can be like a sauna. Thankfully for us, we were here during the rainy season, so every day was really mild. And in case you're wondering when that rainy season is, it's July to October, but I would say it goes into November as well and can start even early in June. But look at all this great food that you have right here in Icon Siam. I ate a variety of different cuisine, which you could probably see on our Food in Thailand video that's coming up soon. And as you can see outside of Icon Siam is a very interesting design and architecture. Beautiful mall, isn't it? But it's a designer mall right along the riverbank, which allows you to actually go across the river by boat, which we're just about to do now. go from Icon Siam over across the river here to River City. And as you can see, that is a free shuttle boat. So that ferry from Icon Siam over here to River City was free. Let's go take a look at River City though. Uh, we're right next to Chinatown, but River City first. And we've made it to the gateway to Chinatown. Let's go take a look. And as with all Chinatowns around the world, there's always this unique experience that you're gonna have down here. And I would say it's definitely in the top 10 things to do in Bangkok. Uh, down here, you can expect to do lots of shopping and the culture and the environment is a bit different than what you would get in the rest of the Thai areas of Bangkok. And that's a good thing because it adds to the exotic appeal that Bangkok offers. That's what I love about this city. It's truly a world-class city, in my opinion. And this here is a look at the shopping around Chinatown. You can see they have fruit, they have food stands, street food, all that stuff right here. And from Chinatown, we're gonna hop on the back of a Tuk Tuk for 200 baht and show you guys around Terminal 21.
Yeah, so we're right in front of Terminal 21. This is right here on Sukhumvit 20, a nice area to check out. Let's go inside. And I like Terminal 21 because it's right here on Sukhumvit, which is usually where I get my hotel. But also on the fourth and fifth floor, they have food courts and the food is really good. As we'll be showing you, you can just get a card, put 500 baht on it, and it'll basically serve you breakfast, lunch, and dinner with 500 baht, which is around $15. Well, $13.89 to be exact at the current market exchange rate. So we're up here at the mall on Terminal 21, level five. Uh, you use the food court here, you get a Terminal 21 card. Uh, you can only put 500 baht on each card, but that's gonna get you a lot. I mean, food here for just one soup, 30 baht. So you get 500 baht, uh, they only take cash. I got two cards, one for me and one for my friend, 500 each, let's go eat. All right, it's a new day, so what we're gonna do is go to Daman Sadek, which is a floating market. All right, so we drove just outside of Bangkok to one of the floating markets. Because it's the weekday, we came to the one that's open called Daman Sadek. That's where we're gonna walk around and, well, I should say float around here. So the way these floating markets in Thailand came about was because of the rainy season they get these floods and you have to build your house up on the stilts. But to get around, instead of walking or swimming, you just get in a boat and you can go around to the markets or you can buy something like a souvenir or in the old days, in that case, you would buy food or trade with your neighbors by boat. And that's how it became the floating markets and there's more than just one in Thailand. So I'm going to be getting this uh, this hat right here. Yeah. Looks cool. Well, it's right. good. Whoa. Okay, thank you. Okay, sawadi ka or kapun ka. And our friend here, come see him. Yeah, welcome to Thailand, welcome to Floating Market. Yeah. One time you come here, good. Good heart, good heart.
And now it's back to BKK, or as we all know it, Bangkok. So we're going to go to one of the other malls. We're going to walk around and see if they got some food and some nightlife going on. I heard they had a concert, so we were looking for this. One of the big things to do in Bangkok is actually go to the malls. This here is Central World. There's also MBK and a few others, but we're gonna go inside Central World here. You can see they've even got a Mac store for those of you who are in Apple. And when it comes to malls, I would say add Central World, MBK, Icon Siam, and Terminal 21 to the list. And as you can see, we found that concert and it looks like the cell phone has become the new lighter. It seemed like everyone had their cell phones out recording this guy. I don't know if he was a celebrity or what, but he was obviously very important. All right, guys, after a week in Bangkok, that's a wrap. We're now headed to Pattaya Beach. We're gonna check it out. It's only an hour and a half away and the taxi rides 1,000 baht, which is around 25 bucks, so I'm pretty happy about that. But we'll see you on our next one from Pattaya Beach. Get ready for that one.